If you're the type of uh, person who likes to be really scared of something in your food system, in your food, uh, this is far more scary. So this is why my job exists. I was hired to work on aflatoxin. It's a, it's a carcinogenic fungi, fungus um, that's naturally produced in corn. It's been with us for thousands of years. Um, it's federally like, regulated at 20 parts per billion. So that's like um, a, a, a drinking glass in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. So there's no way you could detect that. So in, in Kenya, uh, 125 people died and 192 were poisoned. Okay? In the US, we occasionally have dogs dying or turkeys dying from eating this corn of 100 or 200 ppb. And in my research program, we routinely get corn that's 1,000 or 2,000 ppb. Okay? But we're inoculating. We're trying to test it under the most rigorous conditions to make sure it doesn't get this. And so it also leads to these chronic problems like stunting. I mean, you can see the difference between these two chickens. Um, in Benin, in Africa, uh, we see decreases in height for children. In China, we see higher rates of liver cancer. But it's, it's at such low levels, and it's so hard to detect, uh, that it's really hard to track down you know, exactly the problem. Now, if you eat sweet corn, you generally don't have to worry about this, because this forms, uh, at least in Texas, as the corn's drying down. Okay? So this is totally natural, and this is what we're trying to develop uh, natural and GM technology to stop. Right? So again, like the, like the gossip on cotton, there are other uses that don't just help farmers that may actually make our food system safer. So that's why I'm, 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 I personally um, am, am all for you know, each event being uh, examined on a case-by-case -case basis, because some could be really good. Well, okay? in addition to 